Frankenstein's monster. He has an enormous Schwanstor. This is an extremely rare uh, kit, one six scale kit by Horizon Models from the 1980s. It is vinyl kit, officially licensed by Universal of Boris Karloff's uh, Frankenstein. Uh, that's how they call it. They don't call it the monster, they just call it Frankenstein, so I will be referring to it as that in this video. Uh, luckily, I got this for free. Uh, someone was dumping a bunch of their kit collection, and I managed to pick this up with a few other items, so yay for me. Uh, kind of a... well, it is a very large kit, one of the largest I've ever built of a figure, and I had to do a couple trial and errors trying to figure out exactly how to paint him. Uh, that's why you see me doing blue over green right here. You can ignore the green and just concentrate on the blue. Starting off with uh, Vallejo Game Color uh, Dark Blue, and this is just going to be an undercoat just to set the tone of the skin tone. The main skin color I'm going for is Vallejo Model Color Russian Uniform, and that's just lightly done over the blue, leaving some of the blue coming out from uh, some of the darker shade areas. Now, I did do research to get the correct color tone uh, from the original 1930s movie, and the color of Frankenstein in that movie, uh, the color of his skin was blue-green, or pale blue, or pale green, or pale yellow, or silver gray, or any of those colors with a little bit of flesh tone mixed in. Yeah, it's really confusing, and I did do research on it, and couldn't find a definite answer. Uh, most people say blue-green, but how blue or how green is the main question. Um, obviously, I'm going for a little bit more of the green tone, but I also want to keep it a bit closer to the yellow. Um, so, starting off with uh, the green color here, and uh, one thing I do omit, I did try to mix in too many of those colors all at once because I did want some green, I did want some blue, I did want some flesh, and I did want some purple into it as well. Might have been a bit too much. Preceding on to the highlights, our next color is Russian Uniform highlighted with some Vallejo Game Color Heavy Skin Tone. And turn down the air pressure on the airbrush really low, and you see we're working mostly from a top-down area. I'm just trying to apply highlights on some of the larger uh, highlighted surface areas. So uh, broad strokes along the cheeks and the, the ridge and the ears and all those areas. Um, Vallejo paints, at least the model in the game color range, you can use them through an airbrush, but they tend to be so thick you do have to keep them stirred up. So um, you can spray for about 30 seconds if you're lucky, and then the paint will start kind of condensing at the bottom, and you have to mix up your paint a little bit. So uh, it is some back and forth. It is a slow process. Then after that, one additional highlight with more, much more of the game color heavy skin tone added. Uh, trying to be much more precise here, getting those highlights on chin, the nose, eyebrows, and the tops of the cheeks. The eyes are painted with Vallejo model color buff, barely highlighted with a little bit of white as well as the pupils being painted pure black uh, which is a very slight gray highlight on them. I really wanted the eyes very uh, yellow and also the pupils dark because that's how they are described in the novel. Um, the redness of the eyes going much heavier on, the, on that than we would a normal human being using a mix of model color burnt cadmium red uh, mixed with flat red. And the color is very thin, and we're applying it very heavily along the bottom of the eye and also in the corners. I had the green tint to the skin tone pretty well set through the airbrush, but now I wanted to add a little bit of blue into it. And for that, we're using oil paints. And uh, this is a, I think this is Prussian blue I'm using here from the Windsor Newton range. 
and just putting on a small amount and then feathering it into the green, spreading it out, uh, getting a smooth transition. Uh, I didn't use much of this color because it was turning it a bit too blue, but uh, just mainly I used it on the cheeks and then also cleaning it off a bit more with a Q-tip, which is something new I decided to try. And that works in, if you put on too much, you can clean it off with a Q-tip rather than using the brush, which tends to just spread it out. So Q-tip I actually ended up using quite a bit on other areas of this project as well. So now that I have the blue that I wanted to add to the paint scheme, now I want to add a bit more of a pink flush tone to the highlights. So now we are using uh, Winsor Newton Flush Tint. Again, just like with the oil paint with the blue, uh, this time just put on the highlight areas, the nose, the chins, and the brow, uh, and trying to pick up the highlights so there's, you know, there's some resemblance of flush tone in the scheme. Uh, Again, this is kind of me trying to do too many things at once because like I said I had the green, I'm doing flesh tone now, uh, there's already a yellow tint to it, the blue, I'm going to be adding additional color. Uh, very, I'm so lucky I didn't screw this up, adding so many colors onto a single flesh tone. Um, but it actually worked out in the end, which you'll eventually see. And also I will mention, I did try doing this entire project in oil paints. Uh, fortunately, I just didn't work out for me. Uh, I'm still pretty new to using oil paints, and uh, the large surface areas just end up turning it into a mess. I pretty much have most of the colors laid out right now, so now I want to go in and add a little bit of bruising to the skin. And for that, I'm using, again, oil paints, but we're using them as a wash this time. Uh, this is a variety, varying mixture of blue and red oil paints and applying it mostly around the, uh, the eyes, the underside of the eyes, uh, but a few other areas here and there, wherever I think needs a bit of bruise damage. Then once the wash is dry, I go back with a Q-tip slightly moistened with some odorless thinner and cleaning up the wash, redefining it, removing it from any uh, areas where I don't want it to be because mainly this was just to be, since it's bruising, I want it more in the, the recessed areas. He still needs more wounds to him, especially around all the uh, incision points. So going back to what I'm a bit more comfortable now, but using pretty much the same colors, we have Vallejo Game Color Dark Blue, Vallejo Game Color Gory Red, uh, mixed with some Glaze Medium. And using this in different ratios. So uh, sometimes I put a little bit more red on the brush, sometimes I'll put a little blue, sometimes I'll mix them together and do purple. And slowly just blending it into um, any areas around the um, cuts and some other areas where I think, again, he needs a bit more bruising. And the glaze medium gives me enough time to work all these colors in, um, slowly blend them in to this large surface area. So I also found it a bit helpful if you wet the area first with just a little bit of water. Uh, that helps to blend them in, gives you a bit more working time, and helps, along with the glaze medium, gives you plenty of time to blend all those colors together. Frankenstein's hair is black, luxuriously black if you go by the book. Frankenstein had some really nice hair, I'm jealous. Uh, so we're painting it black, um, which doesn't need too much explanation. However, I did want to point out um, painting the edges of the hair. Uh, painting a large, what is basically a piece of vinyl, a uh, hair piece, it's really easy to make it look like it's a piece of vinyl. It's very difficult to make it actually look like hair on a model like this. Uh, one little trick you can do by um, to help it blend in a bit better is if you take a very small brush and take that same color of the hair and just do fine little lines uh, at where the 
where the hair meets any skin tone. Um, it really helps to blend the hair in better. So just go beyond the bounds of the sculpted hair areas and just try to very finely draw in a few little follicles. It really helps the hair look a lot more realistic. Highlighting the hair is fairly simple. We're just adding shadow gray into the black, uh, repeated three times. Uh, I did want to keep it dark to keep that lustrous description that it has, but just uh, doing it in quick strokes, concentrating on the bridge and around the crown of the head. And with that, at least we are done with the skin tone, which is the really hard part on this figure. Um, quite a challenge, like I said. Uh, tried it a couple times. First I tried oils, uh, didn't work. Then I tried acrylics, didn't work. Uh, combination of everything plus the airbrush finally worked out. But uh, this is only one small part of the kit finish so far. We got a, a lot more to do still. But we'll see that next time. Thanks for watching.